Aortic stenosis is a condition whereby the valve at the top of the heart, called the aortic valve, becomes very, very tight. And there are four valves in the heart, and the purpose of the valves is to keep blood moving in one direction through the heart. So when the valve at the top of the heart becomes very tight, it doesn't allow enough blood to pass through it. As a consequence, the heart has to push extra hard to try to push blood through this small opening. Since not all of it can't go forward, some of it winds up going backwards can then cause your lungs to fill with fluid, you can develop chest pain, you can develop shortness of breath, and eventually congestive heart failure. The symptoms of aortic stenosis often present very late in the entire disease process. So patients can be very asymptomatic for many, many years. Eventually, the tightness will get to a point where they start manifesting symptoms, and those symptoms can be chest pain with exertion, shortness of breath with exertion, or lightheadedness or syncope nearly passing out as a consequence of not enough blood getting through the valve and getting to the brain. Survival in patients with aortic stenosis once symptoms present is on the order of two to five years if left untreated. The mainstay of treatment for aortic valve disease is surgery. There are no medicines that's gonna reverse the process or, or treat the disease. The medicines are primarily used to treat the symptoms of the disease but not cure the underlying problem. The only way to fix the problem is with surgery or an operation. There are several different approaches to aortic valve surgery that we can implement here, and we try to tailor the therapies based upon the patient's illness and the patient's overall medical makeup. There's standard open heart surgery, which is the incision right down the middle of the chest to replace the aortic valve. Then along with open surgery, there are two minimally invasive approaches that we utilize to replace the aortic valve. There's minimally invasive aortic valve surgery through what's called a right minimally invasive anterior thoracotomy, or a small incision on the right chest, about three inches in length. Through that, we can get to the aortic valve without breaking ribs or removing ribs. Similarly, there's an incision at the top of the breastbone where we divide just the very top of the breastbone, again, to get to the aortic valve, but most of the breastbone or sternum is spared. The last option is called TAVR, or transcatheter aortic valve replacement, and that's the newest modality that we have here, which is utilized in patients who previously had no options, either surgery or medicine, which can prolong their life. The TAVR procedure is a catheter-based technology that allows us to replace the aortic valve without opening the chest. The advantages of patients coming to Robert Wood Johnson is that we can offer the full spectrum of care related to the aortic valve, including five options to treat the aortic valve from a surgical perspective, standard surgery, two different kinds of minimally invasive surgery, and two different kinds of TAVR procedures. What you're going to see is a minimally invasive aortic valve replacement surgery an operation done through a small incision, but still utilizing standard surgical techniques, which is a little different than the TAVR procedure. At the top left of the screen, being entered into the big white structure, the aorta, is the aortic cannula, which is responsible for returning blood to the body after cardiopulmonary bypass. Now a tube is being introduced into the right atrium, which will withdraw blood from the body to the heart-lung machine or the bypass circuit. An aortic cross clamp is placed across the aorta, the heart is then arrested utilizing standard means. Once the heart is arrested, we then open up the aorta, which will then give us access to the aortic valve. Once the aorta is opened, we look down the aorta directly at the aortic valve. You can see that the aortic valve is very nodular and calcified and difficult to cut out. But the, all three leaflets are then excised the aortic annulus, or that part of the heart that supports the aortic valve, is then debrided of all the remaining calcium. And once all the calcium in this region has been removed, the aortic valve is then sized utilizing standard means. We put sutures in by hand. These sutures are what are going to be responsible for holding the valve in place once the heart is functioning. Once all the valve sutures have been placed, these sutures are then placed 
into what's called the sewing ring of the aortic valve. Once all the sutures are placed through the sewing ring, the valve is seated into its anatomical position. All the sutures are then tied by hand. And once all the sutures are tied by hand, they're cut. The valve is then inspected to make sure that there are no areas of potential leak. The aorta is then closed in standard technique. The aortic cross clamp is removed. The heart is allowed to start beating on its own. We then wean the patient off the heart-lung machine, allowing the heart to do its job. Now you've seen this video for minimally invasive aortic valve replacement, a procedure that's routinely performed here at Robert Wood Johnson.